Hi, this video is to demonstrate some of the presentation mode features that you can use in Chess Microbase. So here we have um, a position that I want to uh, present to a group of students. So I, I tend to put this up on my, uh, on my iPad or my laptop, plug the iPad into an overhead projector and broadcast this out onto the screen. Um, but I want to talk about this position and obviously I don't want all of my students to see what moves are coming up. So the first thing I'm doing is switching it into training mode. Uh, training mode just switches off the move list so now the kids can't see what the next move is going to be. Um, being that this is a, a live presentation um, there are some things I want to do with the chessboard um, so I'm going to click on this presentation mode and what you'll notice is that when the in presentation mode the board has got a, uh, a, a thick border around the outside of it that just indicates that it's in presentation mode. I'll switch it off and it's gone, switch it on and it's back. And the other thing we'll notice is our graphic annotations, which if you've annotated games, you'll be familiar with. The graphic annotations menu is now there as well. So I can click on the graphic annotations menu and it will give me some options to highlight squares and draw arrows and things like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do in this position is I wanna highlight a few things green. Um, for those of you who are interested in this um, position, this was the Jeremy Silman's position that he created for the Harry Potter and Philosopher's Stone movie. And so I'm going to tell the kids that this bishop here on A3 is Harry Potter, this one here is um, Ron Weasley, and this one here is Hermione Granger. So that gives the, the, the background, I can highlight those squares, um, and I can uh, also use the keyboard shortcuts. So the numbers down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, are keyboard shortcuts. So if I wanted to um, to, to use a different colour. See that they're, they're sort of set up for a numerical keypad. So one and four are usually four is just above number one. So you know that they're both green, the two and five are yellow, and the three and six are red. So if I want to highlight, um, I'll press number three. You can see that's changed to a, a red annotation. I can say here's the evil, evil queen which is being controlled by Voldemort's spells. Um, so now I want to make some moves and if I'm still in my graphic annotations any, any piece that I click on is going to highlight. So I need to, to press 0 uh, which is bringing it back to no annotations and now I can actually move pieces around the board. So I can say alright well if, uh, if it's white's turn to move here which it is, um, what would happen if the knight moves here or the pawn moves there or the bishop, um, this knight moves here and I can move uh, pieces um, anywhere on the board that I like, literally from any square to any square. So I could say, oh gee, you've got to watch out, what if uh, if this queen ends up um, here and then the, the knight's going to come in there and we're going to have a checkmate. So you can actually move pieces anywhere around uh, on the board that you like. Um, if I just want to show them what the next move is, I can still use the move navigation. So I'll just say, oh, the next move is actually queen d3. And that shows me, shows me the next move. Um, now it's time to, to do the same thing. I'm going to say, all right, well, remember we've got our three good guys, and uh, they're, they're sort of trying to um, capture or you know, checkmate the, the evil king. Um, so here's, here's the evil king. How are, we going to, how are we going to make sure that they're trapped in? Well, here we have um, the rook and the bishop playing a big part in covering all the squares near the king. Um, you know, maybe you even want to say that, uh, that, that those squares here are all covered and you can actually demonstrate those squares. And it's now getting a little bit crowded. We want to clear that all off and, and go back to the position as we were thinking about it. So the easiest way is just to click on the move list. That will just take us back to the original position and all of your, uh, all of your annotations are wiped out. So basically your annotations are never saved. Um, they just disappear when you've, um, when you've, when you've finished with it. So the, the move that was played in the game, I can show them the next move, was, uh, was rook c3. Um, and I'm just using my keyboard shortcut here to, uh, to, to get rid of the annotation so I can now move pieces around and demonstrate some, uh, some options. So I could say, well, you know, if, the, uh, if the queen moves uh, out of the way down here somewhere, then, then the next move that, uh, that black would make would be a checkmate here. And so you can see that the, the knight's attacking the king. I can draw an arrow to say that. And I can show you all the squares that are covered. This rook covers all of those squares. 
the bishop covers the squares here and obviously the king can't move onto his own square so there you have a checkmate right, so what happened in the game well obviously white's queen just um, took the rook and now um, the, the character Ron Weasley who's controlling the pieces notices that there's checkmate in two moves All right, you can move his bishop here all right, which is putting the king in check right. um, you can get rid of the arrow by just drawing over the top of it the king would have to uh, do something can't move um, to any of these squares so uh, can't move anywhere here so he can't move his king but he can capture a piece so he takes this piece and then the next move is checkmate All right, but Ron decides he doesn't want to do that move because remember this piece here is Harry Potter so if he plays his bishop here he's sacrificing the, uh, you know, the, the hero of the story so he's not able to do that and instead he plays knight here and so again we can make the move and then just scroll with the navigation keys um, putting the king in check and sacrificing himself and really a very brave thing to do puts his own king, puts, in, puts his own piece in danger. So the queen takes the knight, which allows the the next move is the bishop check from Harry Potter, the hero of the story. The only thing that white can do is to block it off, and then we have a checkmate. Okay, so again, you can say that the, the bishop, sorry, I've got to change the uh, arrows, the bishop's attacking the king, and we can see that uh, the rook's covering these squares, bishops covering those squares and uh, and that's checkmate so there you go we switch off presentation mode and we're back to um, just the normal game so hopefully that helps you with your um, with your lessons that you're doing uh, it works well recording videos as well obviously you can you can on the fly um, you know in presentation mode click things uh, move pieces around literally anywhere you like so we just say oh we'll just have uh, you know this position here and you can have illegal positions or whatever you like and you can literally just move pieces anywhere on the board um, and none of it gets saved you can just zoom back to the original position and at, at a click of a button so um, you know I found it very useful for all sorts of scenarios where illegal moves uh, are needed and, um, and and you want to say oh well let's just imagine the pawn structure where you just take all the pieces off the board and um, and then you can talk about the pawn structure which in this is not that exciting. Um, discuss the pawn structure, you know, highlight key squares that are protected or, or weak squares or whatever you like, and then just simply bounce back to your position and continue on with the moves of the game. Enjoy it. Talk to you soon.